Hello and welcome to another episode of Cryptane Weekly. Uh, this is June 3rd and let's get right into the news. Uh, so first up, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the TSA lines. Uh, if you are a person who enjoys going on planes, uh, you might be familiar with these. Um, but essentially right now, apparently the lines uh, at certain airports are like three, four, five hours long uh, and everybody's blaming each other uh, customers or whatever the TSA blames sometimes or whatever at the lines and it's like I mean honestly they, they, they need to do something about efficiency um, so what's happened is uh, Delta Airlines um, has actually gone ahead and uh, pumped in some money into their own research to try to figure out how to improve the lines uh, efficiency and whatnot, and uh, what they did is like it's really simple, honestly. Uh, two, four, six, seven. I think that's how it works. <laughs> I honestly don't know. Let's see. Yeah, that's right. Um, so uh, I guess I didn't do this right then. Hmm. Oh well. Uh, <laughs> four, six. Supposed to be on set? I don't know. Hmm. Oh, I see. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, whatever. I'll do. I'll deal with that later. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, so they got like a they got a system where right now, if you're familiar, you uh, take go in the line and there's all these bins on the rollers, and you put your. Uh, your items in the bins and then uh, everybody's in a line, right? Some people are faster than others though and slower than others and, and that's understandable. Everybody's got a different amount of stuff or whatever. But the way they're doing it now is they're doing uh, the same line. There's like these five, let's say Delta Airlines case, they had these five sections where people could line up, uh, put their stuff in and, and then what they do is they fill their basket and they push it over to the rollers uh, and then the rollers go through, in which case then they could go ahead and someone else could come in in one of those one of those sections. Uh, pretty good, uh, pretty smart. Oh, I hear a zombie. <laughs> uh, pretty smart, actually. And uh, there's other there's other things that they do too. And apparently, this really increases the efficiency uh, of the airline uh, lines. So that was pretty neat. Uh, so there's a bit there's a video of that. And, how, and detailings of how that all goes about. Uh, I guess it's like that. I don't know. Mm, yes. Um, oh. uh, the next step, though, is budget airlines. If you ever wondered how budget airlines work, uh, apparently in Europe, uh, they're super duper cheap. And the reason for this is, uh, I think it's more of a lot of local destinations. Um. In, in close proximity of population, so to speak. Uh, and due to that, you actually, oh, I didn't really think this through, hold on. Uh, you get a lot of really cheap uh, airlines. Uh, they can be like a third of the price, I think 10 euros for some of them, which is pretty crazy. Like they're usually in like America, it's like 20% off for, uh, for a, a budget airline. But in Europe, it could be up to 60, 66% off or whatever. Anyways, uh, Windigo Productions does a does a video on that, detailing all that, uh, which is pretty neato. Uh, so I would definitely uh, give that a check, check see, look, check see. Mm -hmm. Yep, you heard that right. Uh, I would give that a look see. He details all that. Uh, so it's pretty cool if you want, if you're ever interested. And he goes into how how some of the bigger budget airlines actually have tried to do budget airlines uh, but uh, have failed and, and how and why and, and certain other uh, things like that. So it's pretty cool to check out. Uh, so yeah, um, next up is <laughs> something that uh, I've seen plenty of on uh, Facebook uh, is those, uh, those food videos where people put up little recipe videos of like, oh, this is how you uh, make things. And it's like a nice little two, three minute stylized video of how to cook a recipe. Uh, so this is a food, this is a parody of food videos. Uh, get away. He's like, oh man, I'll, and it's like a chef and he's like, I just want to make uh, really, uh, really 
fast food. He's got like making his burgers and fries and chicken strips and whatnot. Uh, pretty funny. Uh, if you ever find the millions of those, they usually a little daunting or whatever. Uh, this is a little funny take on all that. Uh, so I thought that was a cool little thing to check out. Another big one, uh, if you're into this game, which I can only assume you are a little bit, I don't know, um, then you might be into uh, Dragon Quest Builders, which is coming to the West now. And by West, I mean the Americas. Uh, Dragon Quest Builders is a very Minecraft-like Dragon Quest game where you, uh, you're you building up a little village uh, and you got to make these houses and whatnot uh, for the villagers. And then uh, you can... Uh, um, you do quests for them, and, and then it built, and as and you do for quests for the land, and there's their enemies and stuff, and there's like a whole a little story and everything. It's actually pretty cool, and then it can detect uh, like what a building is, the, the parameters of a building, a hospital, uh, infirmary, uh, barracks, whatever, whatever they want you to make. Uh, there's a certain basics, and then you can customize it how you wish. Um, so that was pretty neat how that all works. Um. Oh man, I keep missing this. Uh, I thought it was a pretty cool game. I would definitely say uh, check it out. Uh, so if you're interested, I got a link to that uh, in the description. Um, next up is PC backpacks. Now this is a big deal. Dang, dang, doing math while I'm doing all this is not not easy. I'll just whatever it's fine. I can go over. Um, so next up is PC backpacks. Oh man! Uh, and this is cool because with v VR becoming so uh, big lately, um, this is actually something that's going to become more prevalent, presumably as the, as the years go on. Because you, as you think about it, like okay, so everybody's tethered to the PC right now, and and you're walking into the cords, and and that could be a nuisance for sure. Um, I'm surprised this is all cleared. Um, so with a PC backpack, you'd actually have full range freedom, uh, in a room, but could you imagine a warehouse or there's other VR experiences, but the fact that they have this, uh, makes it really, oh, uh, makes it really interesting. Shoot. Um, so you could have VR on the go or in a more, uh, open scenario, so to speak, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, definitely more prototype than it is uh, ready right now, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, so at least it's cool that they're working in that way. Uh, better, certainly better than trying to get your phone to play some of those bigger budget games that are coming out. Um, next up is a uh, is an article on uh, Verge, which is called "Dinner Is." Oh wait, let me see here. Yeah. Dinner is shipped, and uh, what this is is uh, if you've ever heard of a uh, uh, food shipping services, uh, they ship you pre like uh, pre uh, made meals, fresh 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 vegetables, uh, meats, um, what have you, and uh, what this does is it sets you up for meals. You kind of kind of pick the meals and the portions for your week and then they will ship it out for like 60, 70 bucks or it, the prices vary depending on the service. Uh, and they go over it of ease of use, packaging, um, and, and quality and whatnot. And, uh, if you've ever been interested in going that route to save a little bit of time, uh, gets, and you can also help you try some new dishes because it'll have everything, everything already bought. So you're not wasting anything. Uh, so to speak, um, you can uh, you can try this or you can try these services out. Uh, but anyway, so they they review and uh, go over all these services in, in pretty solid detail. Uh, if you've ever been interested in something like that, I would highly recommend checking that out. Uh, depending on the availability of where you live. Um, next up is uh, a little video short. Uh, this is a uh, it was as interesting. It was uh, if you've ever heard of like. Mars one or whatever, basically, or how they always talk about how like getting someone to, to Mars would be a one-way trip right now. Well, what this video is about, like, let's say, so they had some people and they sent them to Mars, one-way trip. Uh, what happens if you get fired from your job, right? Uh, <laughs> kind of an interesting little funny short uh, about that scenario. 
Um, it's pretty, it's pretty melodramatic. Uh, but I would recommend, oh, that's fine. Uh, checking that out, a uh, fun little video if you're interested. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what else to say to that? I really need to think these through a little bit more. But onward we say. Uh, next up, so now this is where it's getting cool. Uh, there's a, in the military was producing and have actually uh, uh, produced and actually have these in service in the military, but they've never used it before, these XDAT, which is basically like this big huge needle look at thing with little sponges inside uh, and the reason for that is that if you get a big bullet wound or blast or, or some kind of uh, wound where you're bleeding profusely let's say they can essentially put this in here and inject these small sponges that'll soak up all the blood uh, and then clot up clot up whatever your injury is uh, and it's really great because on the on the battlefield honestly most people die or end up having problems because they just bleed out uh, and there's no way to uh, to clot the blood effect efficiently or effectively uh, so in this case someone had a, an injury they tried to block this or to clot this blood this, this this wound for seven hours this guy was in sur surgery and uh, they've tried to blot it the bone uh, bone graphing a uh, whole bunch of stuff that they try to do, a whole bunch of transfusions to keep blood going through the system, and they're trying, and they're trying, and they're trying, uh, and then they're like, okay, fine, uh, let's try, let's try this XDAT. Uh, boom, works. Uh, so this is the first time that's ever been used in the military, uh, in, a, in a, an actual scenario, and it actually worked wonderfully. It actually clotted the blood, so, so they could, uh, not have to worry about the guy bleeding out on them and continue doing surgery. They could actually, it, it actually worked out. It worked out wonderfully. Uh, just a sign of technology uh, and the advancements. So it's crazy how it was like a last resort, whereas it actually worked the best and most efficiently and effectively. Uh, mind you, you know they still have to get all the all the all the blood swell packets back out to do surgery. I'm sure again. But the fact that it works is nice. Uh, just goes to show that uh, in a, in the future that that'll work wonderfully. Mind you, I I also am aware that in in our future we are more dependent on drone warfare and robotics in general. So I mean, the casualty life is very minimal. But but hey, that's someone someone's kid, someone's father, you know, someone's mother, someone's who knows what. Uh, Getting injured and possibly being saved by this—that's uh, pretty amazing in my eyes. So, definitely cool. If you're interested in reading an article on that, uh, next up is uh, Switzerland. Uh, they have produced the world's longest tunnel, uh, 35 miles. Uh, pretty crazy under the Swiss Alps, uh, Swiss Alpes, Swiss Alps. Uh, 1.4 miles under the surface of the mountains. Uh, oh, I'm out of brick. Okay. Uh, 1.4, or yeah, so 1.4 miles under the mountain surface. Took them 17 years, almost two decades to produce this, this tunnel. Super crazy. Uh, I, I got an article from The Verge here, uh, and uh, they go, they have a lot of pictures and whatnot, if you've ever been curious about that, that you can, uh, that you can check out. Uh, looks great. Uh, another article I was looking to do is shipping containers. I've always loved the idea of shipping containers. Uh... I don't know about you, but the idea of making a house or something, uh, all shipping containers come in like a pre, pre, uh, pre designated size. Uh, so you could easily like plan out a house, swimming pool, uh, uh, store, uh, refugee camps, whatever. They had like 13 different ideas. I thought it was really cool to put these to use. Uh, so, oh, schmackadookies. <laughs> So if you've ever been interested in that, I think that's great. They're fire resistant, whatever. Uh, very, very strong materials. So I would check that out uh, if you're interested in that. Uh, they don't really go into great detail, but hey, it could be a start if you have an idea uh, or you're just interested in looking how that all works in general. Uh, and then last but not least is uh, Minecraft sales. I think over 100 million Minecraft uh, Minecraft. Uh, Copies have been sold uh, worldwide. Uh, the article that I'm linking is just posted by Mojang yesterday. 
uh, and they go into detail about like uh, what version, like what what version console, mobile, or PC, uh, which I think is a little skewed because they say mobile and Windows 10. But if I'm not mistaken, the Windows 10 version is actually free if you just get Windows 10, which is also just free for everybody who had Windows. So, I mean, I'm not really sure how much I want to believe that. But you can see that and how they sell, like, I think 50,000 copies a day or something like that. I mean, like, that's like, that's, you know, half a million uh, dollars or I'm not sure how much Minecraft costs anymore, actually. Or a half a million to, to a million dollars a day. They're making off Minecraft. That's crazy. Uh, so definitely worth the pr the price that Microsoft bought it for. Uh, seems to be. Uh, so that was a cool little thing to check out. And uh, yeah, that's it for news. I know it was a little slow, uh, but Electronic Triple uh, E3 is coming up soon, so we'll have lots of news from that in a couple weeks. Uh, and I'll hopefully I can I can get a little bit more interesting things. Uh, in the next week to come, but on to what I've been doing here other than building my very small wall. Don't worry, it'll be much, much taller. Even taller than these walls, although it's it's more of like a, a retaining wall, I suppose, in a sense. Is it the idea of that? Uh, right? Because like, that's like the, the courtyard before the castle type thing. Anyways, uh, what I did build was uh, this little finagled thing, uh, and what this is if you're wondering, I guess I can get a better view outside. Maybe I'll get some dirt for us. And uh, I'll go show. Uh, I know it's all enclosed, but this is my automatic fishing system. Uh, right now it's just enclosed. I put a little dirt there. Uh, so that's what it, a little trap. Yep, that happened. <laughs> a little, uh, little trip wire. Uh, water, I just lighting is a, uh, there's a little redstone in there too, that closes that iron door uh, whenever you activate the tripwire, which you will do in a moment, I will show you, yes, yes, uh, I have it set up in such a way that you could do it all night, uh, you can just put something on your mouse or a keyboard if you set the, set the binding to something different, well anyways, what you do is you get, you get a fishing rod, now you'll probably start with a regular fishing rod, but as you can see, this one has mending on it. Uh, also, luck of the sea. It's just the best one I had. It actually was very broken to start. But as you fish, right, you just hold the button. All you got to do is stand here and hold the button. Super simple. Uh, so like I said, you can put something on your keyboard or whatever. And every time you catch a fish, it'll automatically open the door back up. You'll throw the fish down on top, uh, down to yourself. There you go. And you go back in again. Uh, and the good thing is, is because the fishing rod actually get, loses durability... Uh, but what happens is when you're fishing, you also get experience, and mending on a, an item will repair that item. Uh, and then you simply just, there you go. So there you go, you get it again. Give me that. Uh, and as you can see, the door is open whenever it's... Uh, so sometimes it looks glitched out, but as long as the door is closed, then it's working great. Uh, I got this bow, too, with, a, <laughs> with mending on it. And you can hold that in your offhand, uh, and uh, that will also repair it. Just by having it in your offhand. So what experience goes to your fishing rod, I believe, and then it'll go to this bow, uh, which has mending and, uh, and unbreaking on it, which is nice. Uh, that'll work for all clothing if you can get mending. And this is one of the two, one of the few ways where you can get mending. I think fishing will give you a book potentially with mending, I believe. Uh, I think the next way is to get it from a villager, uh, and then you can also get it from uh, the, not the nether, but the ender, the ender area. I don't know where the dra ender dragon is. <laughs> uh, when you kill the ender dragon, it creates a portal, and you can go to, uh, to, through the portal, and it'll take you to a spot where you can get a book. Anyways, the way I have it set up is, uh, I know I have a chest here. You can use soul sand or whatever. There's a hopper below that, so if I ever filled up with items, uh, they would just go into here. Uh, and as you can see, I got some leather, but I got, you know, pretty cool name tags. Uh, could be pretty important if you want to name your little petals. Pet zoos. Uh, is it dark now? Um, so yeah, uh, pretty great way to get mending, uh, so you never have to repair your stuff again. Uh, and like I said, you'll never have to repair the fishing rod, so you could do that indefinitely, something you could leave overnight or whatever you want to do. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know, I didn't get much done in here. I will work on that. But uh, I hope to see you guys again. Uh, so like, subscribe, comment, whatever, and uh, have a great week. All right, peace out.